you've ever had uh, electrical work done in your house, sometimes the electrician will move a box or move some wires around and then leave behind holes in the drywall. And you can call a drywall contractor if you want to, just for the fun, but you could also do it yourself. And this is one of those repairs that falls into the category of how hard can it be? And that's exactly what we need to ask ourselves, because this is very easy, in my opinion. Okay, so this is all we do. We've got the hole, we get some newspaper, and you start by stuffing the hole. So you might think that I would be standing here stuffing paper for days, but in fact, there's a piece of blocking in the wall right about here, so the paper doesn't go down very far. And all I'm trying to do is give myself um, a surface onto which I can apply some drywall compound, which is the stuff you buy in a bucket. This is all-purpose drywall compound, and it's really great because it's pre-mixed. The only thing is, with pre-mixed drywall compound, it takes a little bit longer to set up. You might have to wait two days between applying it and then going back to scrape it and sand it again. It, doesn't, it just doesn't cure as quickly. But it's great because, look, you just dip your knife in. Yum. And drop it into the tray. This drywall tray, this yellow thing, this is called a drywall tray. It's really cheap, and it's a really great tool to have because it makes the job go a lot faster. Because if you have to keep taking it out of the bucket, it just gets to be irritating after a while. And this is all. You can wipe your knife. It's really... It's a much more efficient tool than wiping it on the bucket. So, okay, here I go. And I'm gonna start with a, with a knife that's far too wide for the job, really. So let's get a narrower knife because I wanna just fill this hole with as much as I can. This stuff shrinks too, this um, pre-mixed drywall compound. It shrinks a bit, so you'll get lots of practice because you're gonna have to come back and um, when this stuff is shrunk and start over again to fill it up because it will be um, dented a bit. Okay, see that's kind of starting to bulge out again like, like, <laughs> like my stomach after a really big meal. And what we want to do is cover that with drywall tape. This is the, what is called drywall tape. And you cut it, at least this is where I get artistic. Oh yeah, that works. You cut it using a drywall knife for, for the professional touch. And then what I'm gonna do is soak this tape in a bucket of water, because it makes it much more pliable and easy to use. So I'll just get it wet there. And then I'm gonna cut another piece, because you can see, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about this cutting thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm making a mess, too. Okay, wait. How hard can it be? You see, that's my philosophy. And in it goes into the bowl. And I'm going to probably need one more piece, so... You know, part of it is that I'm left-handed. It's a great cross that I bear. All right, here we go. So we've got... I'm just going to spread a little bit more mud so that the tape will hold around the edges. We call this mud. Never call it drywall compound in the hardware store. Call it mud and everybody will kind of like gather around you and want to help. There we go. Nice and mucky. See, you don't have to be too careful at this point. All right, so I put my knife back. I get a piece of tape. I just pop it on. It's very tactile. This is a good job. Then I get another piece, and on it goes. And what it'll do is it's kind of like putting a girdle on the thing. It kind of holds that portly little blobby bit back against the wall so it has a more flush surface. Okay, I could really get into this. It's like finger painting. Okay, then we're going to take a very large drywall knife. This is a 10-inch knife. 
and we're going to smooth our work. We're dropping lots of it on the floor too today, which is a good thing because we've got that drop cloth. Um, now you can see I'm applying a bit more of the all-purpose drywall compound over the tape to hold the whole thing in place. The beauty of drywall is that you keep coming back to it over and over again, up to five or six times, making it smoother and smoother each time and skimming it out so that it, so that it becomes very unnoticeable. Which is hard to imagine right now with the way this thing is bulging. <laughs> Look at that. That's quite a, quite a, but you know, that's the beauty of all purpose drywall compound. It shrinks. So it'll shrink it right back in, I hope. Because if it doesn't, it looks really, really quite tacky. The bulge was just too much for me. I couldn't live with it. So I took off the tape and we're back to looking at our, our little bare naked hole here. What we're going to do is take this extra bit of newspaper and make more of a flush surface. This will be tricky, getting it into the... We're going to try to match the size of the hole pretty closely so that it acts as a barrier to all that loose, gloppy compound that's squeezing out and making that unsightly bulge. Okay, it's a bit big, so I'm going to take it out again. Got to get it right. Accuracy and precision go a long way, but they sure do slow you down, don't they? All right, so let's get this right. That's better, and there. It, isn't it a great thing that they make latex gloves? Because right now, this stuff would be drying out your manicure so big time. There we go. Ready. Okay, now don't push it in too far. You'll have the same problem. Again. There. Okay, this is, bit, this is gonna be much more, much more comely sort of an affair that we're having here instead of that ugly bulge. Okay, so I'm going to put the tape back on again, but first, just to make sure that the tape is happy, we'll put a bit of the compound around the mud. There we go. It looks like it's bulging, but I wager that the tape will hold it just fine. Okay, we got the tape. It's wet. We'll just squeegee it off so that it's not too slick going on. And the cool thing about drywall tape is that it has this little um, crease that is preformed down the middle, but there's a bulge on one side and it's um, indented on the other. Put it, put it on the wall with the indent out so that when you're sanding later, you won't have um, a little ridge that you'll end up tearing up. When you buy drywall compound make sure you get the all-purpose stuff but also be, buy a big enough tub that you actually um, aren't going to run out of it halfway through the job it go it doesn't you know you need a lot of it for even a small repair like this we've gone through a quarter of the bucket the reason I'm using this Mondo knife now is because it lets me feather the surface of the compound so it it's not so gloppy close in around the the wound. I'm going to have to get that bit. Then I'll start wiping off, oops, I'll start wiping off the excess so that I can make, make a neater uh, surface. Okay. Come on. Okay, so I've given this patch two days to dry out, and it's nice and dry now, and it has cracked because of the amount of compound that we put over that um, dent. So what I want to do is um, go over the whole surface and make it completely flush. So you could sand it, but it creates a lot of dust, and it's a, the, really the messy way to do it. So just take a scraper 
and I'm just going to, it comes away really easily. And I just want to take that peak out of this, um, out of the plane of the wall. And I should try not to tear up around it, so I'll go at it at a bit, slightly better angle. Around the um, where the tape ends, it, it's really easy to tear up the tape. So it's better to cover that with a, a, the next coat than try to trim up around the ends of the tape. So I'll just leave that well enough alone. Okay, so that's given me about as smooth a surface as I need. Now, I'm going to put on another coat. It's going to be a lot thinner this time so it won't crack again. And um, this is my, my second coat. This is my joint compound. I mixed a little bit of water in because it had dried out a little since it's getting down to the bottom of the bucket. So I've, uh, I've just mixed it up with it, about a quarter of an inch of water so it's nice and creamy again. The um, the farther you go, it, with each subsequent coating, you need to um, keep thinning it because it needs to go on until the, the wall is completely flush. So I'm just going to take my, my 10 inch drywall knife and mix that stuff up so it's really creamy and there are no chunks in it. And that's getting good now. So. At this point, we always use a wide knife because we're going to be feathering like crazy to try to get that surface as smooth as possible. Good thing I got a drop cloth down. So the action goes from the center, oops, from the center out to the edges. And as I move to the edge, I'm, I'm um, pushing down on the blade so that I can spread the compound as far out as it'll go. So I'm going to leave it alone. You don't want to overwork this. I'm going to have to come back again. It's a much thinner coat this time, so I can probably come back by tomorrow and check on it again, see how it's doing. I'm going to put away my drywall compound now, but before I, I put the lid on it, I'm going to float about a quarter of an inch of water on top of the surface of the mud. That way it seals it so that it won't dry out, because last time um, when I just reopened it just now, it was getting a bit crusty. So. Before you float the water on top, you need to scrape down the sides. And that way, next time you open it up, it'll be all creamy and ready to go. It's always good to sniff your drywall compound, and I'll tell you why. If it smells like sour milk, boot it. Get it out of the house. Put it in the garbage because it won't be any good, and I'll tell you why. It goes on the wall. You think that smell's going to evaporate? Well, it isn't. It's going to linger in your home indefinitely. Guests will say, hi, what are we having for dinner tonight? So let me just get on with what we're doing today. We've come back to our drywall patch. This is our third time after the initial, or second time after the initial coat. And what we want to do is, again, scrape away anywhere there are bumps, obvious bumps, and um, you can just barely make out the edge of the original tape now. So this is coming along nicely. I'm just going to scrape away. Actually, I think I'll use a wider blade. So now we're ready for our second coat. 
after the first coat, which was after the original coat. So I'm going to mix up my compound. Now, I've, I've got that quarter of an inch of water on it, and it's a bit, it's going to make it a bit runny, so I'm going to get rid of a bit of that water. I stir with abandon. That's why I wear old clothes, because when, you, uh, when you're an abandon-filled stirrer, stuff goes everywhere. I cook this way, I stir drywall this way. Little tiny splorts going everywhere. Whatever it takes to enjoy the job. I can, uh, if I press down on my blade like this, I get the compound off the blade that's kind of working its way up higher. Okay, and I'm going to start to remove the excess now. And I'm really, I'm really um, carrying the blade at quite a sharp angle to try to distribute the, um, the compound as cleanly and smoothly as I can from the center out. Oh, phooey. See that? That's because I got a little nub of um, dryer stuff. I guess I didn't beat it up well enough, so that's okay though. We can work that out. Now, I'm the kind of person that tends to overwork a drywall repair, so I've got to walk away pretty soon before I, sm you know, smush it up. Let me just get rid of that section there. Doesn't that look better? Don't say no, okay? <laughs> I hit when I'm mad. There, now come on. That's better. The defensive drywall contractor. What? That's good. What? See, I did it again. Okay, you know what? It's time to walk away from the job. When I come back, I can scrape that just fine. Okay, I was frustrated last time because I tore it up. I just made that one pass too many. And now I'm going to use a wet sponge, a damp sponge. Wet will make a big mess. And my widest knife. Uh, the reason you use the widest knife at the end is because the little ones tend to get their corners stuck and mar the finish. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of those nasty little tracks I made last time, except I'm feeling very charitable toward this today because after all it looks pretty good otherwise. Remember our main goal with this whole repair was to fix an electrical box, cover it up where there had been a, an electrical box removed, cover it up, and then make the um, wall look like there had never been a ding in it. And it does look that way. So this is my damp sponge. This is my arm. The sponge should be damp enough to just leave a little track of moisture, but not, not any damper than that. And then, remember I said anything could be fixed in drywall, move the wet, the damp sponge over where the boo-boo is and pretty soon those marks start to with my bucket of water here I'll just put a little bit more water into my sponge and I'll take the sponge all around the edge too so there's no um, telltale line at the outside Look, look, it's disappearing. Stylish and a safety implement.
Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. That's what they like to say. As <coughs> good as it's gonna get. All right, now the, uh, the last thing I have to do is a utility room. It's like I'm way over the top of this already. I should have stopped with two coats probably, but I didn't. It's, it's the whole thing's become a little excessive, but you know what? We're almost done. So I'm just gonna sponge it very gently this time. And I know where the tape is now, and I'm darn avoiding it. Makes an interesting drama, doesn't it, drywall? People just don't get what a plot line dr drywall can really have. There, see? Know when to put the sponge down. It's so hard to stay ahead of household maintenance. For example, think of the number of bugs in your home alone that have chosen death by sealing fixture. <laughs> there they lie, bug upon bug, piling up, the room getting darker and darker. My answer? the common blow dryer, and an umbrella. Stand in the middle of the room, under the ceiling fixture, flick your blow dryer on. And voila, bugs land safely on your umbrella, not in your hair. For a repair to remember, I'm Mag Ruffman. <laughs>